the Australian rules ultimate clash in Melbourne. Joining us tonight and next Friday to exclusively preview and analyse these struggles are those doyen of sporting commentators, H.G. Nelson and Roy Slaven from ABC Radio Triple J. Over to you, H.G. Thanks very much indeed, and welcome 730 club members to Sydney to the climax of the Rugby League year on Sunday at the Sydney Football Stadium. I'm HG Nelson. I'll be calling the big one as part of Festival of the Boot Part 1. I'll be joined on the sideline by rampaging Roy Slavin. But Roy, the league this week in Australia... No, I take that back. The league this week in the world went through the roof. It was a fantastic week of league beginning last Sunday with a match between Coburg and St Kilda at Olympic Park in Melbourne. They said it couldn't be done. You were one of the few in the Sydney media who said it would be an absolute, if I don't mind saying so, cracker. And Roy, take us back to that marvellous afternoon of league last Sunday. It's just been one of those weeks where I've been very, very proud to be associated with the rugby league. Here we had a game in Melbourne we, where it had everything. It was a fairy tale come true. It was a dream come true. Uh, everyone's wearing glass slippers down in Melbourne, anyone associated with rugby league, including myself. Uh, you had uh, players going to thump, you had players walking off, you had a, a, an umpire who was flattened by someone in the crowd. It had all the beautiful attributes that people have come to expect from rugby league, i.e. entertainment with violence and value-added violence. Let's face it, when 13 on 13, you expect a bit of violence when you've got 13 very feisty blokes against th 13 you know, feisty blokes on the other side wearing different colours. But when you get someone from the audience, from the crowd, just go out there, swan out, bleed in to what's happening on the paddock and flatten one of the judiciary, one of the officials, then I say, rugby league, pants off, hats off, it's arrived. It's arrived in Melbourne, it's arrived in Sydney, it's arrived in Moscow. I spoke with Boris Yeltsin the other day. Sure, he's under the knife. Sure, his heart's buggered. But uh, there's a lot of spirit in the old dog yet. He's only 60 because he's discovered the rugby league how? Because he saw that game in Melbourne between Coburg and St Kilda. Hats off Boris Yeltsin, hats off St Kilda, hats off Coburg, hats off Melbourne, hats off rugby league world. And Roy, it goes on and on and on because let's face it, there are going to be a few court cases. Of course there will. They'll go on and on through the summer maintaining the torch, yeah. holding the torch the aloft. The rugby league torch, the burning boot, holding it aloft. Indeed, on and on it goes. And of course on Sunday in Sydney there's a magnificent stoush, and I use that word advisedly, uh, between the Canberra Raiders, the cheating Canberra Raiders, the Chiefs, yeah. against the people who've never won it before, the Men of the Mountain, Penrith Panthers. They'll be colliding in a kaleidoscope of colour and content and vim and vigour, fit people coming all that way to play at the Sydney Football Stadium. Roy, there's a magnificent world that surrounds, though, the uh, Canberra Raiders. It's a yeah. personal world. Beautiful. It's main for... Well, it's a gang of four down there. It's a cabal. Bob, a cabal. A cabal. Bob Hawke. Ros Kelly, big bad Bernie Fraser from the Reserve Bank, and the madman himself, Freddie Daly. Gags Daly. And Roy, it's a fruity, feisty mix that they've brewed up down there. It's a very personal thing, and it's terrific to see. But uh, just take us through some of the ideas that you have that sustains oh, the Raiders. Look, it, it, it's very Canberra. They're a very Canberra team. And, right. and you, you, actually, you know, I love Canberra people. 730 report listeners know, or viewers know that I love Canberra people. Always have done. Here you have a Canberra team who cheats. Uh, cheats to a person, really, uh, in as much as uh, they've been using more money than they've been allowed. Uh, but that's nothing new for Canberra, is it not? Uh, especially when they're working under the imprimatur of uh, the Prime Minister, uh, the Minister for the in Environment, the head of the Reserve Bank, and now the Mint's involved. And the Mint, well, let's face it, they had nothing to do last week. Uh, they were on the tool, on the bludge, on the bot. Uh, so they banged off uh, a couple of blanks, uh, i.e. 50,000 coins, uh, with the head of, say, Laurie Daly on one side and Gary Coyne on the other, two very highly fancied uh, Canberra Woodges players, or Knee Woodges Video Easy players. And I think that's got to be a good thing. It's certainly a terrific thing for rugby league. And, it's got, and anything that's good for rugby league has got to be good for Australia. And anything that's good for Australia has got to be good for the world. So in their small way, I think they're doing a terrific job. Hats off. Hats off, Ros Kelly. Pants off, big, buff-headed Bernie Fraser. And, uh, you know, you can throw the rest of Bob Hawke. Terrific. And, Roy, of course, we come to Sunday. And what a day it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen. And let's face it, people in Vietnam, people in Uruguay, yes. people up there in uh, Panama, yes. people in Mexico City will people be... People who the World Bank have ignored. Indeed, the rugby league has said, come to us. 
And so all these people will be tuning in Sunday to take the pictures of the big one, Penrith v Canberra. And what are they going to get? They're going to get a great glimpse of Australian culture because opening up the show is the village people. Oh, what yes. a fantastic yes. move from the rugby league to rope in the village people and the <laughs> seekers. Right. Well, I saw the village people a couple of weeks ago. They were with uh, Wayne Newton uh, at uh, Circus Circus in Vegas. They were terrific. They don't uh, sing uh, in the style I used to sing in anymore. It's, it's much more sort of, uh, oh, I don't know, adventurous, uh, avant-garde. Uh, they, uh, they, they wear gussetless trousers. Uh, they've got their backs to the audience and they've got their mics set very, very low. So it's very Lapetta Man style gear. But I think it's perfect for the rugby league. And I know that rugby league audiences throughout the world are going to be looking at, you know, the seven or six or five, or I've forgotten how many village people there are these days, with their, with, with their gussets uh, ablaze, with blue flames coming out. And I think it's going to be... And that's rugby league. Hey, watch out, fellas. You'll get right yeah. over here. This is where it gets a little bit vicious. Roy, it's going to be a terrific match. Now, who are you tipping? Who are you going for? Are you going for the It's Personal Canberra side, three on the top, or do you hope that for the first time ever, the men from the mountain can snare the Quit for Life flag and take it back to the Panther Park in Penrith? Yes, well, typically with rugby league, it's a clash between head and heart. This year, bugger it, I'm going to go with my heart. I'm going to say Penrith, Dada, uniform Panthers, come on down and win. Win for Australia, win for the world. And may your selection be the winning selection. Bye now. Beautiful rugby league and watch for Roy and HG next Friday night.